it dinner time. Oh, I think it is. I think it is. Before we begin the actual video itself, I'd like to do a quick overview of the Lübeck F-224 frigate available in this year's Operation Strategist event. The Lübeck frigate was a series of six frigates of the Kern class, which is here, and this was the fourth in the series, I think, and it was one of the ones that was sold to Turkey, don't quote me on that, but I think it is. It is armed with two 100mm uh, MLE Mod 53 cannons, which are of French design, so you have an absurd rate of fire of 60 rounds a minute. Ammo storage down here, so if anybody hits you down here, or actually, is that above the waterline? Not really, but if people aim here and manage to hit your ammunition storage, you're going to go up easily. Next in line for the weapons is why am I doing that? Is the 40 millimeters Bofors, not Bofors, uh, MEL 58 mountings, which have an absurd amount of fire rate and come equipped with heat <laughs> rounds, and they have proxy fuses, which will do a lot of damage against smaller vessels. And although they don't have a lot of penetration, they sure do make up for it in a lot of goddamn damage. The 100 millimeters also don't have that much penetration, around 20 mils, I do think, with the uh, 100 millimeter O, O, P, F, F4, P, F, E, G rounds. So you're only around 20 millimeters of penetration, so you won't be panning much, but you'll be doing. Oh, what's this? Uh, you'll be doing a lot of explosive damage, which will still take down crew rather easily if you uh, aim your shots right. Next up are the Bofors rockets, which are just huge bombs that you can fling in your enemies. So, they're quite potent. Then you got uh, four static mount torpedoes, which are useless. So, yeah, this... Uh, yeah, do I think that Lübeck is worth it? Kind of? In my case, I'm still going to run out <laughs> an entire German tree worth of uh, naval vessels. And if you compare the Lübeck's repair cost to the Köln, look at that. 23 grand stock compared to almost three and a half grand uh, with this thing spaded because it's premium. Yeah. Uh, do I think it's a good grinder? Perhaps. I'll have to do some more... Uh, gaming with it <laughs> gamer i did do uh, this right here 10 pretty much 10k research on the schnellboot i'm i'm butchering these german names and i'm not sorry so since it's a rank 2 you will be able to only research rank 2 and rank 3 in rank 1 if you if, if you have if you have to uh, an unfortunate part about the Lübeck and the Curtain is the fact that they are both 4.7, so you can see the likes of... Actually, let's go to Russia. You will see the Sverdlov, the Chapayev, Kirov, Krasny Krim, Krasny Kavkaz, and all these other really potent vehicles. You also see the London, the Kent, the York. Everything here, you will face, except when they load your vehicles. So, in naval compression... Uh, yeah, I yeah, it's it's not really fun once you get a full up tier, but uh, if you want a more in-depth look of the Lübeck, I suggest you go watch Napalm Rat's video on it, and I think, no, oh, what's his name? Flip Stug, he did a review on this thing, so if you want a more in-depth look at it, I suggest you go check those videos out. Anyway, on with the rest of the video. Okay, third attempt at this. Tog asks, I'm just gonna get right into this. Tog asks on my server, why the name Seno Fudge? When my dad would play his online uh, MMO games, World of Warcraft and stuff, he would use the name Fudge. And so I thought I'd repurpose that for my purposes by just calling it Son of Fudge because really, why not? I'm the son of my dad, so hey, <laughs> so I'm going with this. <laughs> 
Chudyan asks, and he's also the person who I have locked in my basement to make thumbnails. Uh, he asks, will I be recording any other games on this channel other than War Thunder and Kerbal Space Program? Uh, possibly. Um, whenever QR Coder finally gets actual internet out in the Quebec wilderness, I will be doing more Granny Sim, as that is a series I want to retouch on. <laughs> Granny Sim is such a fun game to play, so look forward to some Granny Sim in the future. Maybe I'll have Shag and McBaggett to record some with me. I don't know. Maybe. I'll have to see where uh, things develop into. Nikos3 asks, what are my goals for the channel? And where do I want to see it in the future? There's no real end goal to my channel. Um, at least not anymore. I eventually wanted to make it into the War Thunder Content Creator Partnership Program. But with the way things are looking, I don't think that's necessarily going to happen anytime soon. So, that was my end goal with the... Well, one of my end goals with the channel. I just wanted to make it into the Content Creator Partnership Program. <laughs> So as of now, it's just sort of a, it's sort of a, um, I don't want to put this, let's just say a ship lost at sea, no real, real idea of where it's going to go, or how things are going to wind up being in the future, so I'll have to really wait and see. Mr. Nether, who's also named Mr. Clean on my server, because reasons. He asks, when did I start playing War Thunder, and what is my favorite Star Destroyer class? I started playing War Thunder a little over four years now? About that, yeah? Maybe just under four years? So I've been in War Thunder for quite some time now. Not as much as other people, but still four years is quite some time. Uh, my favorite Star Destroyer class is, and always has been, the Bellator class Star Dreadnought put a picture up on screen. It is, it's a very, very good looking ship. It's been my favorite for years and will continue to be as such. Uh, but a close second would probably have to be maybe the Eclipse. Although that's a fan favorite. The Eclipse is a pretty badass ship if you ask me, Chief. Shagged McBaggett asks, can I see past the lies of the Jedi? Yes I can because I am not a narrow-minded fool. The Angry Quebec Bushman asks, Do I plan on playing more games and making videos of those games? Eventually. Like I said, once you get actual internet out in the bush, we will be doing more Granny Sim, hopefully. Uh, KOTOR and TOR probably won't make it onto the channel for quite some time. Uh, there's a game that I've been eyeing for quite a while now. It's called Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, which is a game where you can... Uh, build your own ships and such, from uh, torpedo boats all the way up to super battleships, and the time can re time frame can be set from the early 1880s to the early 40s. So that's definitely a game I'm going to be picking up when it comes out late 2020, early 2021, if the world hasn't gone to shit by then. So look forward to that making its debut on the channel whenever possible. Shag and McBaggett asks again. Am I a Nazi? For real talk, I'm not a Nazi. And although I'm not an actual Nazi, YouTube might have different opinions on that. Uh, Angry Quebec Bushman asks again, what is my what is your thought about making a review on an attack plane helicopter ship for the game? Like for example, Kotor and the War of Tomb Raider. A review on that game would be interesting because I don't really play that game. Well, if I don't really play that game, I can't really make a review on it, can I? KOTOR will not, I will not make a review on it, because I have not played through the entire game yet, as I am still stuck on the end level of Terrace, which is the starting planet, by the way. Empire of War, possibly, because I've been playing the game for almost nine years now, and I have almost 1,600 hours in that game. So, maybe, potentially, if I ever feel like doing it. He also asked that, it'd be interesting to see what your opinion is on those games, what I love and hate about those games, etc. Well, QR coder. Eventually, maybe. He asks again, what was the most difficult video to make so far? 
probably this goddamn Q&A. This is the fifth time I've tried tonight to record this. So, but if you want another uh, difficult video that I took to make, it was the two Object 279 video. That's about 18 minutes long, and I think it's called the UFO Tank Talk Buffed. And that video took 11 consecutive hours to record, upload, and edit. Only to find out that the first time I had rendered it wrong in my editing software and I had to subsequently restart the entire process of editing. So that took me about till 3 in the morning to get it completely uploaded on this channel. Nikos3 asks, have you ever played Panzermatels? I think you'd like it. Nick, Panzermatels is never going to be on this channel. Never. What are some games that you've played and think that are horrible? Worth them. Into the games that make me rage more. Well, yes and no. Because as much as I literally despise the very fibers of War Thunder, I love the game a lot. It has a lot of potential, but the way that Gaijin is executing the uh, the, is executing the, uh, the way of uh, sort of making or updating War Thunder with new content and such. It's not really a game that's gonna, or it's not really, it's not really benefiting the game. So it causes a lot of frustration amongst myself and other fellow War Thunder players and creators. So War Thunder is definitely a game that I both absolutely despise and love a lot. If that makes sense. Quarter asks again. In the next couple of questions. Any thoughts on airsoft? Not really, as I have not played airsoft. And I don't really see myself playing airsoft anytime soon. He also asks again, are you, am I planning to do videos with us, the lads, he's referring to my moderator group and other friends? It depends on what games really, because a lot of my friends don't play War Thunder or don't have the ability to. So that puts a uh, wrench in a lot of my video plans. As I said before, uh, whenever you get proper internet out in the Quebec wilderness, we will hopefully get around to doing more Granny Sim. And it really all comes down to planning and timing, because there's not a lot of uh, content ideas that I have. So it really all depends on the circumstances. So uh, he asks again, what are my thoughts on Quebec? Well, seeing as I live in Ontario, and you guys, you fuckers are right on my border. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you guys are like the, well, I wouldn't really say you're the Florida of Canada. You're definitely one of the weirder provinces. Good luck with that. He asks once again, am I planning on doing real life videos in the future? Example, vlogs and stuff like that. Probably not in the near future, because there's really nothing interesting going on in my life. Uh, at least, not interesting enough to make a vlog about. We'll put it that way. What was the worst video I did, in my opinion? Hmm. Tough question, because I generally like almost all the videos that I pump out. Although some of my earlier videos, like when I had that shitty 1680 by 1050 p monitor, the videos that I made with that monitor are definitely the ones that I cringe the most at. Tog asks, he asks, what is my favorite tank in War Thunder and how about real life? My favorite tank in War Thunder, by looks, is the Chieftain Mark 10. Performance wise? Uh, oh, that's a tough question. The Object 279, the mouse, uh, the T30. And also, well, really, a combination of the T29, T34, and T30. Um, and will I play Armored Warfare on the on the channel? No. Just leave it at that. Uh, towards the, we're getting towards the end of uh, the Q and A. Chudian asks, "Do I have the N-word pass? If yes, can I say the hard R word? And who gave it to you?" I have the soft n-word pass, I don't have the hard r-word pass. Uh, Shagged my baguette asks, how do I feel about the current state of War Thunder and its future? Current state of War Thunder? Well, tough one. It's not really in a good spot, and it's not really in a horrible spot, but it's definitely not good. 
Um, of course, as you know, we just got out of Operation Summer, which was, thank God, not a crafting event. Like, what we just, what we just just got out of, uh, <laughs> strategist. I hate crafting events and just War Thunder events in general. Because the past couple of months, with the events going on, it's just made the game, uh, hard, well, not really hard to play, but it's just made the game less enjoyable because there's these try-hard tards, just gonna put it nicely, going to their favorite stomping vehicles, whether it be C-14, <laughs> uh, KV-1C, uh, Russia 4-3 and up. It just, it really, uh, down, eh, well, it's tough to say, but sometimes War Thunder isn't really enjoyable, as everybody well knows. Um, current state of War Thunder, can't really give you uh, an, actu an accurate answer, but, uh, it's not good, but it's not bad, and for its future, I only foresee more modern things being added and more useless garbage being added. One of my favorite non War Thunder YouTubers. Um, favorite non War Thunder YouTubers? Definitely uh, Townsends, which is, they are. Well, it's. It's it's a. I think they're a company? No, they can't be a company. I know John had his own store for a bit. I don't know if he still has his own store, but. It's a whole collection of really friendly people who. How do I. I'm really bad at explaining things, but they they make their videos in the style of 17th and 18th century uh, cookery and stuff. And uh, right now, they're working on a Homestead, which I highly recommend if you like old American history. It's just, there's so much stuff that they upload. I definitely recommend you go look at their look at their stuff. Um, non worth under YouTubers who I also like, I do like... Um, Moist Critical, uh, Mutahar, or Some Ordinary Gamers, um, who else do I want? I'm drawing a brain fart. Let's go look at my YouTube subscriptions real quick. I kind of forgot who I watch. Uh, that's not good. That is really not good. Um, as I said, I do like, uh, Ultimate Admiral, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's content, so... The two people who I mainly watch for UAD content is Brother Munro and Stealth17 Gaming. Really good content. I recommend you go watch it if you're into uh, naval games. Uh, Ted Nifison is he's he's uh, really funny. I like his stuff. Ordinary sausages. What can I say? He makes sausages. Robaz. Yes, Robaz. Oh my, Robaz is just. He, he is the original king of sweet. Um, yeah. I like a whole bunch of... Um, I like a whole bunch of people who do uh, both War Thunder and non War Thunder content. Uh, if, I were, if I were to name them all, I'd be sitting here for hours. So, let's just... Uh, and that word is there. Tog asks the final question. Do you think he would play World of Warships on the channel? No. Just put it that way. I've heard a lot of negative uh, things about... Uh, I, I'm losing my voice. I've heard a lot of negative things about World of Warships. Such as the progression system. And uh, the grind in that game. So... If I were to get mad at a game, I'd rather get mad at War Thunder. Because I know I'm going to go back to that game. If I get mad at uh, a game like World of Warships, I probably won't wind up going back to it. I want a game that I'll play continuously, which I won't for World of Warships. So, I guess that kind of answers your question. It's sort of like Armored Warfare. I'd rather my games be somewhat realistic, unlike Armored Warfare, in which it is not realistic. From what I've seen and heard, neither is World of Tanks, because they just pull tank designs right out of their arses. And uh, World Warships, the ships they have, most of, I think most of them are historical. At least I, I think, because I don't watch that much World Warships. But it's realistic in the sense that it has realistic ships, but uh, the gameplay is not very realistic to 
to what I personally like. It's, it's not like War Thunder Naval, although War Thunder Naval is not really comparable. Well, I guess it is comparable to War of the Warships, but War Thunder Naval is still pretty bad. I would rather play War Thunder's Naval mode than World of Warships, if that answers your question. So, that ends this first round of uh, Q&A. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. So, uh, yeah, that this wasn't really that much of a fudge talk so, as much as it was of answering some questions of Q&A that I had sitting in the back of my brain since, what, early July? Early June? So it's about time that I get around to making this. So, I do hope you enjoyed, and, uh... I will see you schmucks later on. Adios.